How is it going guys and welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that want to shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. Hey everybody, how's it going? Dave here. Today we are talking about sound design and I'm going to take an Apple commercial and re-sound design it. Let's talk about sound design for a second. Now, in a recent video Potato Jet put out, Alex Knickerbocker, what a name, said he put it in very simple terms and I think he nailed it on the head when he said sound effects and sound design there's a fine line between the two but sound effects are things that you would find in real life like door slamming glasses clinging glasses smashing stuff like that and then sound design are stuff that you can't really recreate in a studio but really enhance the production and the whole emotion of a scene so that might be like um whooshes and like drones and brams so that's the stuff that we're going to do in this apple commercial shameless plug i'm using my own 360 kinetic transition sound pack for this so that's all i'm going to use for this so any sounds i use you could find a link in the description so let's go and do this in premiere so let's jump straight into premiere I'm only choosing 28 seconds of this commercial. It's the Apple iPhone 12 commercial. So I'm going to just mute the main track. I'm going to use one of my own tracks for this. So we don't get in trouble with copyright. And I'm just going to take my track and just stick it right at the bottom. Just so I've got space to add the rest of my sound effects. Now I'm going to play the first five seconds of this and see what we've got and what we can add to it. All right, so the first five, I can see a lot of cameras and I've already chopped that up. I chopped that up earlier, but that's what I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add some camera snaps to start off with and see what that looks like. So I've got my 360 pack right here. And if you wanna get familiar with the pack, just go through it, highlight what you like. That's what I do with most of the stuff I've got that I've bought over the years. So I've got that camera snap right there. I'm gonna use that and add it right there. Now, a tip I found out and I use quite a lot when I do sound design and wanting to like cut stuff really surgically, if you right click on your timeline and show audio units, that allows you to really fine cut your sound because if you don't, you have to like cut where the frames are and you can't cut in between frames, obviously. But this way, you can be really, really surgical with your sound. So on each of these cuts, I'm just gonna add camera snap all right that's done now let's see what that sounds like excellent now there's this little movement here that i've saw so you've got the phone kind of appearing in the frame so what i'm going to do there is i'm going to add a whoosh so i'm going to go into my whooshes i've got tons here that are usable in my opinion they're very usable so i'm just going to go through and find the one i would like to use i like that one and gonna add that bad boy in because this boost is full spectrum so we've got some high sparkly stuff what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into effects and add a low pass so you'll see me do this quite a bit low pass is going to be your friend when you do sound design and i'm going to cut some of that high sparkling stuff i'm going to solo this track so i think that matches quite well i might move it time so i'm going to just zoom in and move it slightly all right i like that so so far this is what we got Now let's watch the next five seconds. All right, so what I've seen here is I've got an underwater scene right here, and then we're going from the underwater to the surface, so I can do something there. And then we've got a ship getting smacked around. Okay, so let's see what we can do. Under here, I need some kind of long underwater whooshy thing. So let's see what we've got here. Oh, yeah, I think let's see this. One. 
oh i think i like that one better okay so i'm gonna drag this one in i'm gonna see and where that kind of arrives okay so that's where it starts off and let's see what that sounds like okay i really like the timing of that but what i'm gonna do is I am again going to add a low pass, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to key from the low pass. So when it's underwater, it's a bit more muffled. And then when we're up above the water, it kind of opens up. So let me just do that really quick. So we're around here. So this is where the surface is. So I'm going to keyframe that bad boy. Oh, yeah, I like that. Excellent. Now, we're above water, and what have we got underwater? I see bubbles here, so I think I've got just the thing for that. Yeah, I've got some like little mouth drops I made. I'm going to add those in, but I've got an idea of what I want to do with those. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, they're a bit too cartoony at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press R to activate my stretch tool i'm going to stretch it a tiny bit and what that's going to do is going to stretch it but also it's going to lower the pitch of it and space the little bubbles out a bit also what i'm going to do is i am going to add a bit of a delay and this is a free delay this is great it's by a company called valhalla definitely download it use it and this is what it's going to sound like if i add that just the default settings of that and i might mess about with them a bit I'm going to go in, edit the effect a bit, and I'm going to mess with the feedback because that is like the amount of delays that happen after the initial signal. In the mix of everything, it's going to be okay. This is what I've got so far. Okay, and then we've got this ship getting smacked around. So. We need something aggressive, I think. I made a folder full of dirty stuff, so I just took the samples and then added loads of overdrive and just messed the samples up a bit, in a good way, obviously. I think I like that one. Let's see what else we've got. Ooh. Uh, I like that one. See, I made all these samples and then I forget what I've done. And then when I listen to them again, I'm like, ooh, that sounds good. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is, this is where the ship comes in. Uh, and this one is called Fiery Mortar. Mordor. You know, from Lord of the Rings and all that. Anyways, I'm going to lower the volume because I think this one's quite loud. Let's see what that sounds like. All right, I like that. Now, because we come out of that, so it's no longer in frame, I would like to start dipping that out. So what I did there is pressed Command or Control and added a keyframe, just so I can keyframe the volume of that clip. Okay, now this when the next scene comes in. Right here, what I'm gonna do is, he's going underwater, so, I'd like to emulate that in my sound design. I'm going to go to my track. And this is what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to, as it's going underwater, I'm going to chop the track right there. And then right there. And what am I going to add? I'm going to add a low pass filter because that is the perfect effect to make us think we're underwater. And right with the cut is, I'm going to add my default fade which uh, I've got as Shift D, and it just adds the default fade that you have. Now, also what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to watch this back and see what else we need. Okay, so I probably need to give it a bit more space to breathe. So I'm gonna hold my Command key, and then when those that double red arrow is on the screen, I'll just move that clip and kind of keeps the fades in place, which is kind of cool. Let's listen to that. I like that. Now, I think I can make this 
seen a bit more aggressive. What I like doing is using the guitar suite. If you drag that onto your clip and edit that, what you'll see is you've got fuzz and overdrive and all that kind of stuff that really adds hair to our clips. That's what we say in music terms. Just like, just make it a bit hairy, just like a bit more dirty. Let's listen to that. It might be a bit overkill, but you know, let's try it out. Holy smokes, that is <laughs> that is loud. Okay, so we're gonna reduce the amount. Compress can come down a bit. And let's not add as much hair. Yeah, that added a tiny bit of hair. I just uh, added that filter and just affected the low frequencies just a tiny bit. Okay, so let's move on from this one. Also, what I see here, is there anything I want to add? He's going, oh, some text. Okay, so we've got some text popping up. So what I'm going to do is as the text pops up, I'm going to select my video. And with the M key, I'm just going to mark when the text comes in. What did the mouth pop sound like? Ooh. Yeah, let's add that. And I'm going to drag the audio file right there. And the cool thing is, I mean, if I had to, I could be really precise on my cutting right here. And I'm pressing the option key and just dragging these into place. Let's see what that sounds like. I like that. Okay, so you can really hear the clickiness at the front because I've just literally cut that sample. So I just need to add a little fade in the beginning. So I'm gonna do that really quick. Let's see what that sounds like. I like that, cool. And I think we're done with this scene. Let's see what we've got so far. Oh, he's got another bubble there. <laughs> can you see can you see where his nose is? He's got another bubble right there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna add another bubble. Let's see. I think I like that one. Let's add that in. Let's see what that looks like. <laughs> That's quite funny actually. <laughs> Sorry, that that tickled me. <laughs> okay, uh, now we've got a little, way. look at this, we've got a whip transition. Guess what I'm going to use? I'm going to use a whip sound effect. Let's see what we've got. All right, I don't like that. Let's go for a whoosh. I think I like that one, but what I'm going to do is... All right, so because of that length, I'm gonna take my flex tool and just make that a bit shorter. Okay, I like that. But what's Dave gonna do? I'm gonna add that pitch just to make it a bit lower because obviously we shortened it so the sample plays a bit faster. So let's lower the pitch and see what that sounds like. I'm almost there, I'm almost there. Ah, <laughs> what are we gonna add everybody? A low pass filter. Mostly I made these samples to be full spectrum so you can like manipulate them a tiny bit. For the most part, anything you need should be in there, but sometimes the length isn't right. So you kind of need to know all these tips and tricks. I think I like that. So let's see how that matches up in the scene. Okay, so we've got a track back in and then we've got a whoosh. Okay, so let's play the next five seconds and see what we'd possibly need. Now here, I've got a whoosh into some text appearing about it being a bionic chip. So we're gonna go and look for something digital. So I'm gonna stop it there where the text arrives and see what kind of effect we can add here. I made loads of little digital effects here, so let's see. Oh, I think that's the one I want. Actually, what I like is I'm going to cut it around here without that initial attack of the sample. So it goes in a bit smoother. Let's see. Ooh, I like it. 
add some keyframes. Let's fade that sample out. That's good for me. Now, the next thing we've got is he's playing a game here. So I think I've got something for this one. And for this one, I am going to actually pan these. So when I say pan, we've got a stereo image. And obviously, we've got two ears. So when we put things in stereo, we start manipulating sounds and putting them a bit wider. So they affect our left and right ear. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the first sample and I want it to hit my left side first. And then I'm going to take the second one and I want that to hit my right ear. Also, what I'm going to do is let's add a bit of reverb. Convolute Studio Surround. I think the Studio Reverb might just do the trick for us. All right, I like that. And I just, the wet is how much of the effect you can hear. And dry is like the dry signal going through. And in context. Let's uh, watch the next few seconds. We've got some whips and camera pans. So I'm going to go and find some whooshes for this part right here. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I've got four whooshes. Let's see what kind of whooshes I have to put in this one. I like that one. I'm going to use that as the first one. I like that one. Okay, so let's go with the second one. We've got a bit more of a slow ramp on this one. So it doesn't start until about there and the peak of it is around there. Okay, now let's see what else we've got. All right, I think I like this one. Let's see if we can make this one work. All right, then we've got two more. Ooh, ooh, short gust of wind. I think, I think we've got winner here, peeps. We're almost there. I think. Gonna go to my friend, Mr. Low Pass. All right, I'll take that. And then we've got one last one. What would be cool is to use that one, but then shorten it. Again, I'm using the flex tool to shorten that bad boy. Let's just listen to the whooshes. I like that. Again, I'm going to mess with the panning of these. So, you know, give me a bit of that sense of space. Although the samples are in stereo, when you put them in context, I think you need to just tell them exactly where you want them to go. So I want it to hit left, right, left, right. All right. Okay, so let's move to the next scene. And I'll tell you what I've done here. So I've made some cuts already here, but I'll show you... What we have here is like loads of cuts and it's got like a 360 kind of view of all these people using their phones. Now, what I did originally was I selected the clip and then went into clip and used a scene edit detection function where it kind of edits what scenes should be cut and cuts them for you. So I didn't have to go frame by frame and cut these. I just used that scene detection feature in the new Adobe 2021 version and it just made my life easier. What I'm going to do here, I'm just going to add some camera snaps. So let's go up and use that. All right, so let's see what we've got here. Excellent. So that's done really well. Now I'm going to go and watch this again. Let's see, we've got 360 view, 360 view, click, snaps. Okay, so we've got some games playing in here. So I'm looking to see how many <laughs> effects I can actually add. Let's add some kind of digital sound here. I feel this might be a winner. I like that. I'm going to add it there. So that's like a digital kind of sword. All right. And look at this guy. He's got a whip. So I'm going to use a whip for that part there got lots to choose from Ooh, first one first time lucky 
And right here. Okay, so we've got Mr. Man kicks the ball. So some kind of impact there would be cool. Some kind of hit, kind of some kind of impact. What I'm actually going to use is well, here you go. I like that. I like that a lot. Let's stretch it out a tiny bit because I think I can affect that pitch a bit more. Let's trim the high frequencies a tiny bit. Let's see. Ooh. Oh my days. That is sounding crispy. I think that's the one. We can use a bit of a dirty whoosh to make a bit of crowd noise there. I made this sample called Space Extinguisher which I think will fit quite well here just to make that crowd noise. Listen to this. Close, in context, I think it'll make sense and it'll make a bit more sense. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do. There's this plugin, free plugin again, called BX Solo. And what this does is it takes any signal and it wraps it around your ears. Edit. Let's add a bit of verb to that. Let's go with surround verb. Let's see if this one does the trick. After a while, I mean, you find your favorite verbs and stuff. I, I think I like that. Let's try this other Valhalla. It's the frequency echo. So I'm going to try that instead of the surround verb. Uh, let's add a bit more delay, a bit more feedback. That might work. We stumbled across something that I think I like. Because it goes into that spinny scene afterwards. So that might work. So let's see what we've got so far. Right there, I'm gonna stack another sample just to create that impact. Just to, cause I want it to hit my gut a bit more. Ooh, let's line that up. Ooh, I think I've got it. Okay, that's cool. Okay, I like that. Now he's playing this game. So I think I've got something digital to add there. Let's we'll see. I think I like that. I'm going to use that little ping. All right. And then he throws his phone in the air. Ooh. So I've got it. It's just like this low frequency. All right. I think that's a bit better. And then he catches it. I think we can add one of those faster ones around here. Ooh, ooh, almost there. Key from that, because I don't want it the whole way. Okay, I like that. And he puts his phone down, so I'm going to use a little click. I'll use that bad boy there. Yeah, that's the one. All right, and right here, when the letters and the text like glue together, I'm gonna use a reverse bell I've got here. So that's that's a bit loud. We'll adjust when we get to it. Bring the volume down a tiny bit. I think that's the one, you know. Okay. And when the text glues together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the music. Cut that. And it'll be quite an abrupt end, I think. But I think we can make that work. Get rid of that bad boy. And what I would like to do is I'm going to add a bit of verb to that just so it kind of swims in the distance. Let's go for Mr. Black Hole. Hmm. I like it a bit too much, but I do like it. And I'll 
create some keyframes. Now, this is a bit of a glitz, or they might have done it on purpose. What's happening here is because I've let this sample, the actual audio is a bit longer, so the effect is gonna carry on for the length of the sample, even if I keyframe those, the volume of the actual clip. So listen to this. So I think that's it. I think we're done with this bad boy. Let's watch it from the beginning and see if we need to add anything. like how it came together. The next steps I would take would be to mix this. So make sure the volume of every clip is as I would like it. And then the next step after that is I would personally multi-track everything, drop it into my DAW, my digital audio workstation where I do all my mixing and make sure I create pockets, like tiny little EQ pockets for the sound in my music track. So everything pops a bit more and nothing collides too much. So that would be like an extra detail. But as far as the samples I've added, I think I'm really happy with what I've put in here. So that's the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully, you know, picked up some little tips and tricks here and there. All the plugins I used, I'll just have in the description. All the sounds I used were for my own 360 Kinetic Transitions pack. And I'm like, I'm super pumped to have it out there. Links in the description. Until next time, peace.